Hey, it's me, Oscar from the Coding Universe, and this is episode 1 of an entirely new series entitled OpenGL in C++. In this series, I'll teach you how to use OpenGL in C++ using GLUT. Now, let's get started. In this lesson, I'm going to create a very simple GLUT application that shows a triangle with a window, not much more. So let's start with the imports. Since we're on a Macintosh platform, we want to include OpenGL slash GL, I mean, um, GL, GLUT slash GLUT dot H. If we were on a Windows or on a Linux platform, we would have to get separate DLLs and include gl slash glutz.h. Now let's get over to the main method. int main, int arg count, and a char pointer pointer arg v. So now we have a very basic C application that basically does absolutely nothing. To compile this application we would use G++ for the source file since it's called basic glut. The source file would be basic glut.cpp. The output file would be basic glut. And we're also going to write minus framework OpenGL and minus framework GLUT. By doing this, we specify that we want to use OpenGL and GLUT in our application. So now when I press enter, it compiles. And when I press dot slash basic glut, it will run the application. As of now, it does absolutely nothing. Now, GLUT is a library very similar to the OpenGL library in that it has static methods which are always prefixed with GLUT. The first method we're going to call is GLUT init. It's going to take argc and argv as parameters. Now the second method we're going to call is glut init display mode. Now it wants some some constants. By using a bitwise or operation you can specify multiple attributes for the display mode. I want to have depth, double buffering, and support for all the colors including the alpha. To do this I'm going to use the constants glut depth, glut double, and glut red green blue alpha. Now the third method we're going to call is glut init window position. This will set the window position to the specified location. The location we will specify is 100x and 100y. Now for the fourth statement we're going to type in glut init window size. Thus we're going to specify the window size which is going to be 640 as width and 480 as height. Now the last initialization method is called glut create window. This takes a string as parameter and will create a window with the string specified as title. So here I'm going to create a window. The title will be simple glut application.
and that's that. Now there's one thing I need to do before a window shows and doesn't crash, which is glut main loop. By doing this, I tell glut I'm I've finished the initialization process and I can start rendering. Now let's save this and compile it. So use the same statement as before. Oh. Hmm. We're going to start and spe to specify the render method. Never mind what just happened. It was a failure. So we're going to declare a void method called render in which we will render. Now to say to OpenGL that this is our render method. Oh, here comes the beauty of C++. We can say glut display func and type in render. So now we say hey glut, we've got our display function. This is where we want to render our code and we just give it our render method. Now when I compile, it hopefully does com run. Yeah, there we go. So here is our simple glut application. Now you're probably asking myself, well that's all fine and dandy, but what can I do in the render method? How does this work? The first call in the render method is going to be a call to the OpenGL method called glclear. The glclear method clears the screen of all previous drawings so that we're not hindered by them. The parameters will be in bitwise or fashion gl color buffer bit bitwise or gl depth buffer bit now the last statement in the render method will be a glut method called glut swap buffers this will send what we've drawn to the screen so that it can be rendered. Now for some drawing I'm going to use immediate mode OpenGL which is now unfortunately depreciated but I'm going to use it anyway. In future tutorials I'm going to explain more advanced techniques such as using vertex buffer objects, vertex arrays or frame buffer objects. Now for the immediate mode. The first method call is glbegin. glbegin takes a gl enum, in this case gl triangles, which indicates that we're going to draw triangles. Every glbegin method is paired with a gl end method. So for every glbegin method there is a gl end method. If you don't do this, OpenGL will throw an error or another weird bug will appear. Now between these glbegin and glend clauses, we can give vertices to OpenGL. We can do that by typing in gl vertex 2, 3 or 4 and then f, i or d. Now the 2, 3 or 4 stands for 2 dimensional, 3 dimensional and 4 dimensional. The F stands for float, the I stands for integer and the D stands for double. So if I wanted to use floats in a 3D vertex, I would say GL vertex 3F. If I wanted to use integers, in a two-dimensional vertex, I would say GL vertex 2i. 
For the purpose of this tutorial, however, I'm going to be using 2D vertices. So I'm going to type in GL vertex 2F and between the parentheses I'm going to write minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 and there we go. This is the first vertice I'm going to give to OpenGL. Now this is how the OpenGL coordinate system works. The y and x values are, well, they're on top of the screen. The bottom left corner of the screen is where the axes start. Now we also have a z axis which stands for the depth but I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. What I'm going to do now is explain to you how the drawing of a triangle works. So I'm going to clear this and explain it to you. Now let's say we want to draw this triangle which is a bit crooked but that doesn't really matter. So the triangle consists of three points. These points are all vertices which you can give to OpenGL. Now in this case this point is minus 0 0.5 and it's also minus 0 0.5 in x, I mean in y, so it's minus 0 0.5 in x and y. So minus 0 0.5, comma, minus 0 0.5. Now this vertice here is 0 0.5, 0, and this vertice is 0. 0 0.5 and I actually just met messed that up because it should be the other way around I think yeah it's the other way around going back to our code I'm going to specify the second vertice which is also going to be a two-dimensional float value and this is going to be 0 0.5 and 0. Now for the third one, since there are only three vertices, I'm done now. Which is going to be 0 0.0 and 0 0.5. Okay, let's see if it works. So, compile as before. and run as before too. So here we have our very cool triangle. We can also modify it like this. So we can change the vertices up a bit. So now it looks like this. This is the triangle we just created. Now we can also specify colors. To do that we can use the OpenGL color methods. These are similar to the vertex methods in that they also have a 3, 2 or 4 or probably just 3 and 4. I don't know that for sure. And they can also accept F, D, or I. So we're going to specify a color for a vertice. Note that all the colors between the vertices are interpolated or interpolated. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. So for the first vertice, we're going to have a red color. So one, 
0, 0. Red, green, blue. Red is 1, so we have red. Green is 0, since we don't have green. And blue is also 0, since we don't have 0. Um, I mean blue. Now the second color will be green. So no red, no blue, but there is green. The third color will be blue. So no red, no green, but there will be blue. If I save and compile this, you can see I have some very nice colors here. So we have blue, red, and green, and the remaining vertices are automatically interpolated for us. I'm still not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Now, I'm going to do some simple keyboard and mouse functionality. GLUT also makes it very easy for you to handle keyboard and mouse events. To do this, we are going to use the glut keyboard func and mouse func methods. So I'm going to write glut keyboard func keyboard and glut mouse func mouse. These are function pointers to functions that do not yet exist, so we're going to create them right now. Let's first create the keyboard method. The signature is char for the character, int for the x, and int for the y. For the mouse method, the first parameter is the button, the second one is the state, the third one is the x, and the fourth one is the y. So now we can implement these methods, void keyboard char c int x int y and the char is the, the key pressed and the x and y values represent the position of the mouse when the keyboard event was sent so let's do something like if c is the same as a or 27 which is the ac ASCII value for the escape key, we're going to exit our application. Now for the mouse method, which takes four integers, the button, the state, the x, and the y, we're going to say if button is glut write button exit 0 so if we press the right mouse button we want to ex exit the application let's see if this works by com no we also have to include the standard IO stream for the exit method to work it seems And this should not be a char, but an unsigned char. There we go, it compiled. Now let's see if it works. I'm going to press the escape key. And the application closed. Let's try that again. Now I'm going to press the right mouse button. And the application closes as well. So there we go, this was episode 1 of OpenGL and C++ development. I hope to see you soon.